it talks about how this servant was led away innocently, and it says over here in verse 7, he was oppressed though he humbled himself and opened not his mouth, as a lamb that is led to slaughter, and as a sheep that before her shearers is dumb, ye he opened not his mouth. In other words, we're talking about somebody that basically put up no resistance whatsoever when they came to take him. Right? Now the question is, based on what information we have, did Jesus go to his death without protesting? Well, let's look to the Gospels. John chapter 18, verse 36. Jesus answered, in other words, what happened was he was put on trial. And Pilate asked him, um, you know, is it true that you're, that you're the Messiah? Are you the Messiah? You know, basically, Pilate understood that the Messiah is not just some man who comes to die for the sins of the world. If that was the case, there's nothing to worry about. He understood the Messiah as being somebody who is going to be a political leader, is going to be a king, and he's going to overthrow Rome. So Pilate asked him, you know, are you the, are you the king of the Jews? And basically, in John 18, 36, Jesus says like this. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight so that I might not be delivered to the Jews. But now, my kingdom is not from here. What is he saying? Essentially, he's giving a very good argument to get himself off the hook. What is being held up for over here? Sedition. He's, he's being brought, uh, trumped up charges against him for political revolt. And Jesus gives a very eloquent answer, saying, you've got nothing to worry about. Why? Because my kingdom is not of this world. Right? I'm not here to start a political revolt. I'm a spiritual, I'm here to bring a spiritual kingdom. Thereby, he would get himself off the hook. So, clearly, we don't see that he didn't open up his mouth. He gave, him, he gave a very forceful response to Pilate. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, um, Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane. And he gets down to pray, this is before they come to arrest him. And he says, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. What he's saying over here is, God, I don't know if I want to go through with this. I don't know if I want to go through with the crucifixion over here. Right? Please, if it were possible, please remove this cup from me. But then he says, obviously, but will go as your will, as your will not as my will. And then again, in Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama shabachtani. That's a corruption of the Hebrew, which is azatani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Again, it's not an imagery of a lamb going to the slaughter, not opening up his mouth. So Yeshua was trying to let himself off the hook. Somehow I don't even think this is a serious argument. I think this is a clear case of trying to get anything to throw at the Messiah in order to make it look like Isaiah 53 is not about him. But I will try to answer this objection seriously. I challenge anyone to read John 18 verses 33 to 38 and come to the conclusion that he was trying to get himself off the hook. In fact, he even acknowledges he was a king in John 18 verse 37. Yeshua has told his disciples over and over again that he was going to Jerusalem and die and be raised up again. He stopped his disciples from defending him when they came to arrest him. He himself said that he could easily prevent his arrest by calling for 12 legions of angels to his defense in Matthew 26. He willingly went with the people that came to arrest him. He didn't defend himself before the Sanhedrin when he easily could have exposed the false witnesses. Taking all this into consideration, are you really trying to tell me that he was trying to get off the hook? Now he was standing before Pilate, thereby risking the chance of being freed, contrary to the many prophecies he made about his own death and resurrection? As for the Eli Lama Sabachthani objection, which is not a distortion of the Hebrew, uh, although the Hebrew says Azaftani, it is said by scholars that the term Sabachthani is from the Aramaic Shavak, which corresponds with the translation in the Greek. This cannot be seen as an objection to the prophecy, 
the verse should be understood as not objecting to his accusers. That's exactly what the text is about. The verse starts out, he was oppressed. He was oppressed by whom? By his accusers. And then it goes on to say, like a lamb who was led to the slaughter. He was led to the slaughter by whom? His accusers. So I don't think it's a valid objection either. How about Jewish martyrs? We know the story of Rabbi Akiva, that when he was being taken out to execution, it was the time of the recital of the Shema. And the way they executed Rabbi Akiva, we read about it on the Kippah, mm -hmm. they took pitchforks mm -hmm. and they combed pieces of flesh off his body. And while they were combing pieces of flesh mm -hmm. off his body, he was saying the Shema. Mm -hmm. And he was smiling. And his, his, his students couldn't take it. They said, remember, Rabbi Akiva, you, to such a point you're going to be that religious, you're going to be that devoted, how, how can you do it? And he says, all my life I have wondered about the verse when we say you have to love Hashem your God with all your soul and with all your might and, I, and with, uh, uh, with all your heart and with all your soul and I explain that to me that even when they take your soul even if you have to give your life up you still have to love your God and I've always wondered I've always wondered to myself when will I have a day to see whether or not I can live up to that and the day has come. Now here we have an imagery of Rabbi Akiva going willingly to his death. And how many millions of Jews went to their deaths thinking Ani Mami Bermuna Shulema that they believe in the faith of, uh, of the coming of the Mashiach. And they believe Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekein Hashem Echad. People who did not uh, protest their death but went like sheep. Somehow I think that the story about Akiva is just a mythical story that was invented to make the suffering of the pious Jews in exile uh, and oppression more bearable. You will not tell me that a man that his, has his skin peeled off will laugh because he was able to remain pious. Obviously a myth. However touching the story of Rabbi Akiva may have been, and how, however noble he may have been himself. 